It's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back to my min-maxing series for China. One thing that was brought up in between episodes is why don't you go for the fascist advisor and then work down the fascist generic tree towards fanatical, ideological fanaticism. Because what this does is provides you with a 10% attack and 10% defense, which is really useful because all of this are cores. All of this is cores. So what you'll be doing, whether you're attacking or defending, you'll be provided with a 10% boost, which 10% is huge. The problem is, is you are blowing 150 PP early on, which could be put into one of your advisors or trade laws. Plus, you're going to wait for the fascism to go through, which yet again might take about six months. And then top it off as well, you're going to work you down this focus tree from political effort all the way down to ideological fanaticism, which takes about, well, maybe about two years. So to give you the biggest benefit to mid-max China up to the most optimal way, you're probably going to be better off going for something like industry or doctrines, for instance. There you go, mate. there's a inside info about that then. Get a bit of an inside info. What's going on? Usually what you want to do at this point is just try and burn out the uh, the Japanese player. That's Europe. That's what you want to do. So we've got them locked in here. So I'm not going to launch an attack because I'm throwing my equipment away. And I don't want to do that. So at this point, I know their organization is going to burn away. So in this case, I'm just going to let them sit. Let them sit. And they'll burn their organization. And then I won't have to worry. Plus the Soviet players helping me out. So that's all good. Our Navy is meant to intercept a few boats. Which is okay, I suppose. But we are losing our Navy. The problem is you don't start with any capital ships. If you had capital ships, it'd be a good idea to hold on to your navy because you could do shore bombardment, but there's absolutely no point, so don't bother. There you go, we can wipe out these guys now. There goes some of their troops. If we were to be fair at this point, it would be probably a good idea to just to just use my planes to do that. And then stop. Remember, you don't want to continue this assault because you are going to lose a lot of planes. And remember, they've got way more planes than you. All right, so our quick response team is going to back up now. The Japanese players aren't moving forward. Remember, this is the AI. Remember, this is not an actual real multiplayer game. Yeah, I know. <gasps> Gasp. What, Dave? You're cheating. This is not a real multiplayer game. You lied to us. Yeah. Well, it's to get a demonstration of how you would handle it. And as you can probably see, because we're mid-maxing so effectively, as you can probably see, this is insanely, insanely strong. Can we move forward? Looks like we can. Also, it's a good idea as well to do... Uh, oh, hello, hello, hello. So in this case, we'll we'll do our demonstration. We'll we'll get them all to move here. Grand battle plan. I'm gonna go for prepared defense. We should have had a prepared defense a little bit earlier. I must have did mess that up a little bit. You guys are getting position. So one other tactic as well, which I should have done this in advance, is I should have set a fallback line here. This is a big river, and the, the penalty for big rivers for attacking is massive. So taking advantage of those big rivers is a good idea. It's always a good idea to make the fallback lines in advance, so therefore when you need to deploy them on there, you can do that. And if you do see a breakout, you can make a fallback line really quickly, and therefore they can't instantly surround you straight away. Yep, alright, that's pretty much that. And uh, for the most part, I think we're secured for where we are. At this point, I'm going to sign all of you guys to him. And do that again. And they're not even going to move. That's perfect. That's good because that means they've not lost their entrenchment. And that entrenchment bonus is insane. Got the extra search slot. We're going to go for the extra doctrine. Tell me about guns, but I don't worry about that. Because we want to make sure we keep that efficiency as high as possible. So we are just raking out as many guns as possible. Right now we are producing way too many infantry equipment. So we need to scale that back a little bit. Remember, we are focusing on high reinforcement priority, okay? So these will be secondary to supplying our troops on the ground. Which is essential to keeping the war effort going. At this point, I'm pretty happy with this, uh, this front line here. So in this circumstance... I'm going to tell you guys to go here. And then hold firm. They've not even gained a tile, aside from this one. There you go, done. At this point, I would also consider expanding into other areas as well. I think what we'll do is look at one of these divisions. So this one is 14, this is 12. We'll look for another template that we could use. 
width. And then what we can do is make this a 20 combat width. Call this attack. Give it an icon. Um, why is this the hardest choice I've made this far? Why is this so difficult? I think we're going to go with the dagger. Oh, the fist. Oh, shit, the fist, boys. Is the music really quiet? I think it is, isn't it? There we go. All right, so these are going to be our fist army. So this is going to be like an offensive attack army for the purpose of making actual breakthroughs. In, in retrospect, it's only going to be a little bit more powerful than my regular infantry because it's just, let's be real, it's only infantry at the end of the day. We'll exercise them as well. Keeping a close eye on naval invasions. Remember, these icons here will tell you about naval invasions, so it gives you a heads up what's going on. All right, guys, you need to, guys need to be on uh, escort. I'm going to make sure we get these guys to regular so they can do some crazy damage. Italy joined the Axis. Oh my god, guys, is there a world war happening? What? Support equipment to get some engineers. <clears throat> Naval invasion here, northern China. So we're going to move our quick response teams to cover them. This is a bad scenario because th this actually, now I think about it, is a really good spot to land. Because what you can do is move up here and then you've got an encirclement penalty on them. The AI obviously is a little bit reluctant to engage with that plan, but you kind of get the drift, right? And another invasion here. Oh, no, that one's been abandoned. Never mind. And there's another one happening here for some reason, but it hasn't been executed. So at this point, yet again, you don't want to be attacking. Remember, your biggest bonuses are for defense, remember. So you want to focus on attacking. So in this, so, uh, start again. Your biggest bonuses are for defense, so you want to focus on defending. Uh, at this point, I'm trying to think what we're focused on right now. We're going for infantry equipment, aren't we? I could go for logistics to lo stop losing equipment, I suppose. These guys are happy to go, so we'll go and push them back. Be very careful of battles where you're not winning, because if you're not winning, you're going to be chewing through equipment, and that can really slow the amount of troops you've got in the field. Remember, the amount of overall troops you've got is going to be a winner in the long run. So in all fairness, you probably your best bet in this instance is... Now, nah, in all fairness, they're all good. I mean, this one and this one are the most important ones to hold on to. This is just hills. It's not urban, so they can grab hold of that. And if they've got a port, they've got a staging ground to open a second front. The more fronts they open, the more spread thin you are. Remember, they can concentrate their forces into a small area because they've got a lot of soft attack, artillery, tanks, aircraft. Where on you, on the other hand, you're kind of spread... Well, you're not spread thin because you've got a lot of divisions as such, but... If they can keep, if you can, if they can maneuver you over several front lines, they're going to cause absolute pain for you. It's going to be a nightmare. So in that case, you want to try and avoid that situation. Also, building planning bonus as well, which is pretty good. And you guys are all gone now. Got them. Another invasion e here. Doesn't look like there's nothing going on there. Got 210 divisions here on this, on this, on this, on the coastline. Uh, here and here. There you go. Got way too many troops on the coast. All right, we can slow down the amount of divisions we're making now by a massive amount. We can focus on artillery as well. We definitely need the steel, so we're going to get lots of that from the Soviets. At this point, you usually will be still focusing on guns. Remember, just keep a close eye on your guns, really. Now, this is something I don't want to touch. Look at this. In this case, we've got so many excess guns. And we have the ability to upgrade. We would, I mean, in a normal game, I probably would upgrade. And in this instance, I surely should upgrade. But to simulate, stimulate, to simulate a multiplayer game, uh, in this case, I'm not going to do that. Support equipment, engineers. Be aware of the level of production you've got as well. You've got no rubber and you've got no aluminium. So... Plane production is kind of a waste of time, and oils, anything with oil is a bit of a waste of time. So use your, play to your strengths. You've got tungsten, you've got steel, and you've got a little bit of chromium. The chromium is not going to help you. So just use what you've got. All right, these guys are all trained. That's good. This is our attack force, so I guess we could, in this case, move them here. Go for the extra guns. We are going ahead of time, but it's all good. 
Oh, stop exercising. And then you can start thinking about offensive maneuvers. Usually in a multiplayer game, if the Japanese player has half a brain at this point, you they've probably uh, either made some gains towards by grabbing Beijing in the north, uh, maybe even grabbing the east, and maybe taking out the People's Republic, or opening a southern front as well, uh, which in that case you'll need to just keep splitting off your troops and dividing them and trying to focus and trying to figure out where they're going to launch their attacks. If they've got tanks or big artillery divisions, you can kind of gauge where they're going to make their attacks, so that's going to give you a bit of a inside information. So yet again, if you look at the defense and the defense in compare the two, you can tell that they've got superior weapons, artillery, guns of every shape. I mean, like one division here. Look at this one big division just holding us back. That many we're throwing at them. But at least we've got some offensive potential anyway, so that's always nice. Uh, now at this point, it's kind of up to you what you want to do. Secret weapons is a good one. It's normally a good idea to go for radio as China because you're usually needing to reinforce a lot extra, so you, that's probably a good one to go for. I'll go for the secret weapons first, so that'll be an option. See, look at this. One division trying to push into... 20 divisions trying to push into one division. And these are our best divisions too, and we're still not having any joy. So it just gives you an idea that our offensive capabilities are, for the most part, pretty bad. Um, can I stop? Attack here... Hang on, stop. Stop, oh, I'd say to do that. There you go, building up some planning bonus. We, we've got grand battle plans, so we might as well use... No, we're not going to do that. I was about to say we've got grand battle plans, so we might as well use the extra planning bonus by building it up. At this point, yet again, I, I don't think I'd be being as ballsy by pushing into the north. At this point, I'd still be playing on the defensive. But seeing as I know I'm playing the AI, I'm kind of playing a little bit more adventurous than I probably would, normally would. Have we got our front line here? Yep. Oh, okay, these guys have... Okay. Realize we've split these off somehow, I don't know how. And it doesn't matter, kill them. Here, here. Got him. Got him. Got a lot of troops on the coast. Got an option for an offense here. Should I take the offensive abilities? I probably should. For an attack. What well, might be a good point at this stage is to switch out to the attack guy as well. And at this point as well, you could uh, use your excess planes. You could get the Soviet Union to give you planes as well, which is going to be worthwhile. As you can see, the reinforce rate's really low. We need radio to you know, keep that reinforce rate going. You have to really... Att the biggest issue is if you want to make an attack and break the Japanese player, it's going to take such a long time that they're going to be aware of what you're going to be doing. Usually with Blitzkrieg and other kind of really offensive spearheads, you can do them so quick in multiplayer that the player can't even react to it. In this case, he's going to have loads of time in advance to react to this. Because we're playing on 5-2 right now, so that's like, in actual game time, that's like that's several minutes, isn't it, you know? So they have loads of time in advance to react, so in this case, it's going to be a no-brainer when you're going to launch your attack and when it's going to be successful. Um, at this point, I'm on the fence of what you should do. It's, it's completely up to you. I mean, going for the political power, this one's an interesting one because it gives you 20% extra forts. And it gives you also 20% extra military factory output. So I suppose that's pretty good, I suppose. It's up to you what you want to do. At this point, I don't think it's that relevant what you end up doing, but whatever. Whatever tickles your fancy. What's this? Where are the landing here? Yet again, keeping a close eye on naval invasions, which will be indicated by an icon on the right side. So just give you the heads up on that. Keep a close eye on your planes as such as well. At this point, you'd usually get lend lease from the Soviet Union for guns and even planes, or even tanks if they've got them available to you, because that will really help you out. But it is up to you how you choose to play your game. Don't let me be the judge and jury of your game, okay? You play your game how you want to play your game, alright? Don't let me be the judge of your game, alright? It's your game, remember? Oh, they take Beijing, okay. There you go. 
got to be careful when you make your launcher assault. Might, might want to put it on careful to avoid them encircling you. Oh, they've, they've launched another encirclement here. There you go. Good old AI. Just sneaking behind my back when I'm unprepared, eh? Hmm. Hmm. In this case, we'll activate the planes again. Then launch an attack here and hopefully break them. Eventually, you'll burn them out so they'll be able to get destroyed. But it's, it is a bit of an uphill battle, as I made you aware, because uh, you've got very little offensive capabilities. But now you've got an extra 10%, so that might be a, a bit of an advantage. Keeping an eye on the artillery production too. I think we're doing pretty good now. So in that case, I think we'll start adding artillery on. Yeah, we'll do that. In this case, we'll go for a classic. Um, he's an offensive general, isn't he? So we can go the 2-2, can't we? We'll do that. So this is a lot of soft attack now. So we'll, uh, the offensive capabilities are going to go up massively. All right, these guys are making a breakthrough and being very, very annoying. Lesson learned, guys. Don't do any offenses. Um, play defensive until the very, very, very last minute. Because then silly things like this happen. Anyway, we've got loads of troops here, so we can move some more dudes up north. Break off the coastline. You get a bit of an idea, because if, if the Japanese player makes lots of landings and are unsuccessful, at this stage you can say to yourself, okay, so they've lost a lot of divisions. Their, their ability to land marines on this is going to dim diminish massively. So in that case, you can just chill out a little bit. A little bit. Just a little bit, though. For some reason they're not surrounding this area, I'm not quite sure why. And the problem right now is there's forts there as well, which is causing a bit of a headache. Making a unified front line. Making one here too. 47 divisions, put them all here. For some reason, you don't want to move, and I don't know why. New railroad to here? Are they stuck? Ah, oh, I think they have to fight through here first, don't they? There you go, go here. There we go, we've broken out, okay. Yeah, let's go here. One other thing to be aware as well, you will get low supply situations. Don't worry about it. Take the attrition, take the low supply, and take the penalties. For every low supply situation you experience, they're going to be experiencing it twice as bad. Because remember, they've got big, heavy, soft attack, big, fat, high production divisions. So every bit of attrition that you suffer, it's not so bad. You're losing basic guns. What they're losing, they're losing artillery, they're losing tanks, they might be, their planes might not be flying efficiently. They're going to suffer from considerably more penalties than you. So your low supply is no big deal compared to theirs. And plus, you've got field marshals. When they're in low supply, they get the trait of logistics wizard, which is so OP, which reduces supply by 20%. 20%. It's massive. Is he gaining Logistics Wizard? I think he has to be in combat to gain it. No, he's not. He is a Field Marshal, right? So if you look over one of his divisions... No, he's not having attrition. Okay. I think it's probably because this is a big port. Oh, no, no it's not. I'm going to quick look around the rest of the country, just making sure there's no landings. There's not really much you need to go for right now. What I usually do is I'll go for extensive and go for total mobilization. I get limited conscription. Limited exports is a good one because I don't need as much steel now. <coughs> I have to import a wee bit of aluminium too, so I can maintain my support equipment. Usually one row will do. When you've got the one row going, and you start building a pr efficiency up, usually it works in your favour. So look at this guy, look at the s skills on this guy, he's a god. Um, this guy isn't gaining the, the traits I thought he would. Is he gaining logistics wizard as well? Let's have a look. 
No, I'm just charismatic. Oh, he's already got it. There you go. Logistics wizard, minus 20% support, um, supply consumption. There we go. I got it out. Yeah, so that gives you a bit of a, <clears throat> a bit of an idea <clears throat> of why that stat is so unbelievably OP. Don't want to lose my production efficiency, so I'm not going to switch those out to the better artillery yet. Yet, yet, yet. Um, ba, 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 ba. And then we're going to launch our attack and go. You guys aren't moving for some really, really weird reason. As you can see now, there's a lot more offensive capabilities because of the higher soft attack on the divisions. We've got an unbelievably huge amount of guns, so I'm going to switch out to the latest guns. Because look, at there's a surplus of 160... No, 36. Okay, I guess it's a combination of the guns. No, I guess they're the only guns I've got. Never mind. Looks a lot bigger on here. 31,000... 162,000. Oh, of course, they're all the ones that are in the stockpile that are actually in the hands of guns and soldiers already. Okay. We've got our planes fighting too. More than likely we'll be considerably losing more planes than them, which is just normal really. Launch another attack. Aggressive for a second, just so they attack and put them back onto careful. Improve the guns again. Remember to always listen to that sound effect for the naval invasion so you can be aware of when uh, they land on you as such. Breaking these is a nightmare. The fact that we built forts here makes it even more tricky as well. You gotta be aware of positions of terrains, because terrains such as uh, urban, forts, rivers, they uh, they make attacking an absolute frickin' nightmare. So just heads up, my dudes. Be aware of the potentials of uh, of not having all the right stuffs. Infantry offensive is there. And boom, done. Have we got secret weapons we have? So in that case, I probably want to focus on you. So we can get the radio down. That's good. So at this point, I guess if you're going to think about an offensive of capabilities, you want to right, knock out this puppet here. So I'm going to move forward now. He's not gaining logistics with it, which is kind of annoying, but forget it, who cares. Um, then we're going to move forward. These troops are not helping, so I'm going to stop these guys. Remember, because if, if they're in combat, you want only the best troops to be in combat. The ones that have got the biggest, highest soft attack. These guys are having a nightmare breaking this because they're in the hills. But well, we might have to grab their capital here. 70% unity. Extra political power, um, we'll go for limited, 8.57 million. This guy, are you gaining, not gaining logistics wizard, don't ask me why, no idea. It might be a good idea to switch these ones around actually. You go for this guy, there you go. And now this guy is with an awesome general, with all awesome stats too, so now he'll do some crazy damage. We've got the planes helping out as well. You'll be aware of the supply situation. We are repairing those roads as we speak. Looking at where we can expand. Probably Beijing. Um, you could go for continuous repair focus if you wanted to as well. Just to keep that production pumped out if you really, 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 really wanted to. It's up to you. 30, 30, 30, 20, 40. Yeah, there we go. Keeping those factories being pumped out. As you can see, I'm doing a quite a powerful offensive there. And as you can see, we've lost a lot of troops and a lot of guns. So that's something to be keep a keep an eye on. Because overall, you are going to take some considerable losses. Gonna go for radio so we can reinforce real quick. Naval invasion here. Probably won't execute or go ahead. 
Probably because he's not got air support or naval support or whatever. And there you go, Manchuko is dead. An opportunity for a pocket here. Could I do a classic right click? Do here. Not really a good idea to push into the mountains, but I want to try and get this pocket as big and fat as possible. So we'll go here. There you go, we made a nice little pocket there, nice close in here. Probably could do this as well. Engineers too, can we add on our engineers? I didn't even check that. No, we can't, but we're going to do it anyway. Now, think about it. Even if you're low on supplies, adding support uh, brigades is a good idea. Uh, because if you think about it, it doesn't expand the combat width. So, if you are low on the guns, uh, so if you are low on the supply of the equipment, just go for it anyway. Because it doesn't have any kind of, there's no detrimental effect on the overall division as such. So, just add it on. Where if you make the division bigger through here, you're making the combat width bigger. Which, if... You have a division that's under strength, he'll still have the same combat width, even though he's under strength. So, just to, that's just a rule of thumb to remember. So, if you if you add on support, and you've not got the equipment, there's no penalties. But if you're adding, making a battalion, you're adding an extra battalion on, you're going to suffer from penalties because the combat width's going to be wonky. But remember, it's always going to be better to have the highest amount of uh, combat width anyway. Regardless, 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 regardless. Yeah... Yeah. It's a bit of a concern this, to be honest with you. I probably should have taken care of it. As you can see, the guns are becoming a bit of a problem now. Seventy percent. Naval invasion, extra guns, close off those pockets, dun dun dun. So as you can probably see, now I look at it on hindsight, it probably would have been better off to not make a second row of artillery and just gone for what two rows of guns and one row of artillery and one line of support equipment. It's just something I've spotted in hindsight. Realize I'm losing a lot of my dudes here, so I'm gonna back these guys out. I could increase the size of the infrastructure, I suppose. That's one possibility. Um, it's not really something I wanna do, though. Your offensive capability is gonna be surely just down to the amount of guns you've got, because as you can see, that one offensive has cost 20,000 guns. Was it? No. There was 30,000 in, in in stock, weren't in the stockpile, so I lost 40,000 in total because I'm minus 10. Yes, yeah, so there you go. That just shows you one offensive with infantry alone causes you a catastrophic loss of gear. Those are all up to date now. So as I said, liberty focus and, and going for the deterrence is a pretty good one as well. It's 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 not something to really be thinking about too much about and putting too much emphasis on. Um, as I said to you before, it's um, it's a little bit a bit down the focus tree, if you know what I mean. It's like it's too far down, you know. So he's building with logistics wizard. You gain logistics wizard for fighting in areas with low supply. So that's just something to to be aware of. Um. Might be a good idea to build up my capital, and then here, and then here. Right now our production is pretty damn good, so it's not really a good idea to focus and branch out at this point. Doc, this one is armored operation, not really any benefit. Uh, not really, no. Support, support reduction is very, very good. Uh, land attack is so strong. Organization is good. And reconnaissance and reinforce rate. I suppose they're okay too. 
One of the initial benefits you get from going for Mass Assault is it re the reinforce rate plus 2%. So from the get-go, initially, if you've got a lot of divisions, if, particularly if they're crappy ones, you will benefit from that reinforce rate. Remember, reinforce rate is the amount of troops that can get into combat and actually fight. And in this case, there's no one sitting in reserve, so that's not applicable. But if there was a combat with a lot of troops sitting in reserve, like here, uh, the reinforce rate would increase the chance of them joining the battle every single day. I think it increases by 2% every day based on the total amount of reinforce rate you've got. Don't hold me to that one, though. I think at this point, it probably would be better off to go for repair focus or construction engineering. So, it's well and truly official. There's no worry about them landing on the coast anymore, but I can't really do anything with these divisions anyway. So, I think one thing I could do is because we are having trouble with guns, is I could kill a few of those divisions off. As I say that famous last word, they're going to land on top of me, right? <laughs> yeah. One thing you can do is the Japanese. I mean, I shouldn't really be telling this because I'll make a video on it, but as the Japanese, you need to be using every single one of your planes at all the time to... You, you've got to work to your strengths, and the Japanese don't have a lot of divisions overall, but they've got every division they've got has got some insane production. This is 1941, two years ahead. Damn, I want to go for that. Yeah, damn. Oh, support equipment. Thank you, dude. There you go, we've catched up on guns now. See every one of our divisions now are adding on artillery, that's good. I feel like this this row is gonna be upgraded to the higher ones. So these these ones are gonna be for the most for they're gonna be upgraded priority, aren't they? Um no. But these guys will receive the bigger artillery anyway. Has anyone got the bigger ones yet? It's probably because I've just gone for it, so it's probably not showing yet. Be aware, one of the mistakes you make is don't go for total mobilization unless you've got extensive. Because what will happen is you'll dip below zero uh, manpower. And in that case, you're going to be in a situation that's going to be a bit of a pain. Anyway guys, that's the end of this episode. Remember to like and subscribe, drop us a comment. And also uh, click on the bell icon to be notified of future episodes. Hope you have an awesome day. See you soon. Bye bye.